we're going to be hopping on this massive 178 foot long blimp to go out over the Gulf, look for oil, distressed wildlife, any displaced boom. And what's going to happen when we take off? If you can see those guys standing over there in the yellow vests and orange vests, the blimp is going to levitate and then they're going to actually grab ropes and pull us out to where we need to go and then we're just going to float away over the Gulf. Now, uh, the Coast Guard is saying that this blimp is more efficient than what they've been using in the past, which is helicopters to spot oil, because if you compare the two, a helicopter uses about 150 gallons of fuel an hour. This, about 10 gallons of fuel. In addition to that, a helicopter can stay out for about three and a half hours tops, whereas this blimp can glide over the Gulf for about 10 to 12 hours. Also, it's it raised a bit of uh, concern with some people wondering why it's taken until day 92 to get this out here. We talked with one of the pilots. He says there's just been a lot of red tape to go through. Uh, the blimp's on a 30-day trial right now. It's on about day 11. And if all goes well, they're going to be using this as a permanent thing to spot and clean up this oil. Captain, what type of technology are you guys using to help you spot wildlife and spot the oil and communicate with the ships below? Do you have cameras on board, any type of uh, sensors? Right, that's a good question. Right now, we're, we have the uh, sensor suite that's going to be showing up this, this week. We're going to have an infrared camera, a normal EO high-resolution camera, and a data link. And we're going to start with that and see how that works out. Right now, we're just using the Coast Guard observers looking out the window. Okay, and the infrared camera, how's that going to help you out in the future? The oil should have a different temperature than the water around it, so we look for infrared scarring on the surface. So uh, we have information from the Coast Guard research guys that the oil is visible in the infrared band, so we think that's going to enhance our detection capability. And I heard from some people you guys might be even flying at night as well. We're going to try a couple night sorties to, to find out how the camera works at night on the oil. The oil is always changing temperature, so the target is going to be easiest to find in certain you know, low, low sunlight conditions and in the infrared there may be a prime time where it really manifests itself well. So we're going to be experimenting with that to find out when the prime time is to use those sensors. And above all, if you can summarize the past 11 days out here on this area of the Gulf, has the amount of oil you've seen surprised you or been less or more than what you thought you'd see? I think it's been, um, I'm not from around here, so I, this is my first time really seeing it. I thought it would be worse than it is. Uh, we are seeing spots and stuff, but I mean, the Coast Guard is really the one that makes the assessment on, on, um, on that. Okay, great. And Kira, uh, earlier we were in a debriefing and they said that they did spot some oil off of uh, the coast about half a mile off. They spotted a sheen. So we're going to head out there right now and see if we can uh, uh, assist the skimmer vessels in getting out there, right? All right, we need to get going. So All right, we're, we're taking off. Right now we are headed away from the Alabama coastline, out deeper into uh, over uh, the Gulf of Mexico to continue to look for oil and any injured marine life. Now, some things we've seen so far, we haven't seen any of those big oil slicks, but we were talking with a couple of the lieutenants on board, and when they drove uh, closer to the coast, we saw these brown patches underneath the water, and they say that concerns them because those are actually huge patches of bait fish. Normally, they say bait fish are about a mile away from the shore, but they say because of the oil, the fish have been swimming in closer to the coastline. And also as a result of that, that's bringing more sharks into the coastline. One of our lieutenants said he saw about 100 sharks off of Orange Beach here. Uh, as, as far as it goes riding in the blimp right now, it's just gliding across the top of the water. And that's why they say this is such a great help in the hunt for oil because they can move slower than airplanes. They can move slower than helicopters and really get a chance to sit here and stare out the window and see what's going on and that's what I'm doing right now. I'm kind of taking the job as a spotter over here. But why? It's day 92. Why, why is it taking you guys that long to get such an efficient ship out over the Gulf looking for oil? Um, me, just me personally, I, I, the versatility of this, I mean, the reason it's taking a long time is they were doing a lot of classified work. Um, for the United States government, which I really can't talk about. So, and there's only one of these. There's just one. So, hopefully there'll be more. Well, we're about uh, 500 feet now uh, above the Gulf of Mexico, and right over there, that beach you're looking at, that is Gulf Shores, Alabama, and the Coast Guard is calling this blimp the newest tool in the toolbox in the oil uh, cleanup, because. This blimp, pretty much as we're doing right now, you see we're just kind of gliding over the water. 
it's able to fly at low altitude so they can check out if there's any injured marine life or any oil slicks. And right now you're taking a look at some boom. If I can have Chris slide over to the damaged area of the boom, that's another thing this blimp is being used for, to, to check this out and, and make sure that all of it is doing okay. And you, how many missions have you guys been on to, to check out the boom and, and what types of damage have you seen? Yes, Amber, good morning. We've been looking for boom up and down the coastline of Alabama, Mississippi, and Florida over the past 10 days. Uh, we found a lot of boom uh, incursion as well as sunken boom. We're reporting back to the uh, incident command post located in Mobile, Alabama. Actually, right now we're flying over Escanaba County, Florida, which is Perdillo Bay. And if uh, we can have Chris pan over to the right, what we're looking at. Right through here? Okay. What we're looking at in the bay right here is multiple layers of boom. In case the oil ever gets into the bay, the initial layer fails. They have multiple contingencies inside the bay that will help corral the oil so it doesn't get into the wildlife. And as you can see down there, uh, Chris, if you can show that skimmer vessel right in the middle of the water protecting this little cove, there's some sensitive marshlands on the other side of this beach. Another thing we noticed on this flight that surprised our Lieutenant Tony, who was talking to us earlier, is just how empty the beach is. Look at that. See all of these lawn chairs and umbrellas normally filled with families taking their oh, yeah. summer vacation, oh, yeah. just empty. Another thing that surprised us, too, is, Chris, if you can show the people in the water, there's a warning out right now, uh, warning people not to enter the water because they just don't know how safe it is. In fact, our crew here on board has seen uh, schools of sharks in the area because they're chasing bait fish that are actually fleeing the oil and, and coming in close.